All right, we back. Okay, now, before I cut the camera out, uh, I was gonna show y'all uh, this footage concerning uh, Iran. Now, I showed you the footage of the uh, vice president. Now, I'm finna show you the supreme leader, the Ayatollah, whatever. Hold on. I don't want that part. Yeah, y'all bear with me. Let me see. All right, all right. Let me see. Now, this is what he's saying. Okay. More than four years later, he's once again leading the Friday prayer. And that's why it's extremely important. So here, there's another message when I was talking to Iranians and the experts here today. And one of the reasons that he has decided to go public and to lead the prayer, particularly this time, of course, it's related with the recent developments. However, they say that now the Iranian authorities, from the top of the state to down, they want to send out a message to Israel that they are not hiding, they are not seeking shelters, they are not going underground, because just remember the Israeli uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu during his speech in the United Nations General Assembly has said that there is no place in the Middle East that Israel will not be able to reach. And now the Iranians are coming up and challenging that. And they're saying that now we are here. You know our location? We all are here. And it's not only Ali Khamenei that's present today in Mosalla Mosque. It's the president of the country, all the leaders, the heads of all the branches of the government, the top commanders, ministers, vice presidents, almost the whole state dignitary, the whole state hierarchy is now there and publicly in a location that's very well known and the, 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 the Supreme Leader is leading the prayer. And while this is happening, just remember, hours after Iran has launched missiles attacks on Israel on the October 1st, just hours after that, the Iranian president has made his uh, has made an international flight from Iran to Doha to meet uh, the, 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 the Qatari Emir, also several other Forgive state me for leaders. interrupting you, but and I do want today, to take our viewers back to the um, Ayatollah Al Khamenei, who is speaking in relation to uh, some of the incidents that have been happening over the last few days as he's leading prayers unfolding. This is the policies adopted by our enemy to sow the seeds of division, to sow the seeds of sedition, and to drive a wedge among all the Muslims. The enemies of the Muslim nation are the same enemies to the Palestinians, to the Lebanese, to the Egyptians, and to the Iraqis, they are the enemies to the Yemeni people, to the Syrian people. Our enemy is one. And the policies adopted by the enemy in these various countries vary. On one occasion, it is a psychological warfare. In another, it is an economic warfare, and in a third country, it is a military warfare. Their operation room is one. They receive the same orders, and their orders is to target and hit the Muslim peoples. If their policies of sowing the seeds of division succeed in one country, they may prevail in one country. And once they seize control of one country, they move to the other. Therefore, we should be vigilant. We should be conscious. We should be aware when we see the enemies moving to target one Muslim people, we should remain conscious.
measures and we should act in support of those people simply to foil the schemes of the enemy. Once the enemy succeeds in their scheme in one country, they move to the other. For years, the Arab and Muslim nations have been unaware, yet today we must remain vigilant. We should roll up our sleeves from Afghanistan to Gaza to Lebanon. We should move and act. We should roll up our sleeves, get prepared for action. And this is what I wanted to start my sermon with. First, to our brothers in Lebanon and Palestine, who have been reeling under all types of injustice. So I want y'all to hear that. That's the way he's talking to them uh, Arabs, which now those, uh, you got Ishmael and you got Elam, okay? So he's talking to the Arab, which is Ishmael, but he's Elam, okay? So they are two different nations, but they in that land. You got Sunni and you got Shiite. So, I just want y'all to hear that, okay? Sunni and Shiite Muslim, that's what it is. But I just want y'all to hear that, that's the vibration on them. But that's the vibration of the Heavenly Father and His Son putting on them to build them up, to give them confidence, okay? So, and while they over here in America, they selling you pride and safety. Okay, on the news. That's what they selling y'all. Propaganda, pride, safety. And they doing the same thing over there in the land of Israel. But like that vice president said of Iran said, look, we more closer to making nuclear bombs than ever. And uh the Supreme Leader over there, which is the council or ruler of uh of uh Iran, he's telling them Muslim nation to roll up their sleeves and get ready for action. Mm -hmm. So see, that's the mind state that the Heavenly Father and His Son is putting in them Arab and in Elam, East India. Okay? But I don't want to go dead. Let me change the battery, bro. Okay, we're back this time. I had to change the battery. I want the battery to go dead on me. So you heard what the uh, Ayatollah of uh, Iran said. So, brother gonna read uh, Psalms uh, 30, 32 and 8. All right. All right. This, is, uh, this is Psalms chapter 32, verse 8. It says, I will instruct thee and teach, and teach thee. Yeah, that's your how about you now talking to us, the men of the Lord who are here people, starting with the apostles and the elders of GMS on down. Okay, go ahead. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. Uh -huh. I will guide thee with mine eyes. I will guide thee with mine eyes. You see? So we're being guided, man, by the Heavenly Father and His Son, man. That's why we're able to bring this news to you. We got special insight on the future and the past. We the seers that the Bible speaks of. We the prophets that the Bible speaks of. We got insight. So I want the brother to read that one more time, then we're going to jump to games. All right, this is Psalms chapter 32, verse 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the ways which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eyes. See that? So, 
we finna jump right to Daniel chapter 7 and verse uh Now, when you read the Joe Sheeper, which I'm going to put it up so y'all can see it, right? The post production. I'm going to put the Joe Sheeper stuff so y'all can see it, what I'm talking about. So, when you read the Joe Sheeper, when Alexander came into, came into Jerusalem, you had the Israelite with the Levi showing Alexander in the scriptures saying, This is you. And Alexander new hebrew and he was taught by uh uh aristotle okay he was taught by aristotle okay which was an israelite he was taught by aristotle and alexander new hebrew and apostle ha brought that out so alexander could read and speak hebrew okay and he was taught by aristotle which was an israelite Right. Now, when Alexander came into Jerusalem, you had the priest show Alexander in the Bible that this is you, okay? This is you, right? And what they showed him is what I'm gonna read, okay? Now, it's a reason why I'm, you know what I'm saying, going into this, when you read the Apocrypha, it mentioned Alexander. In First Maccabees, okay, they mentioned him. So names are being named in the Bible, okay. You got a 1611 King James Bible, and you go to First Maccabees, you'll see Alexander name in it. So names are being named in the Bible, okay. Even in the real one that we got, seven. But I'm telling you this because we. As men of the Lord, through the spirit of Pai Yahweh Shemesh we say it humbly, we see the past and we see the future. Okay? So, when Alexander went into Jerusalem, the priest showed him in the Bible where he was, and that gave him confidence to do what he was doing. So, give me what you got in uh, Daniel uh, 7 and 6. Alright, this, uh, this is Daniel chapter 7 verse 6 Go ahead. after this I beheld and lo another like a leper that's Alexander right go ahead which had which had upon the back of it four wings and the wings represent him in speed conquering the known nations at that time the dark nations back at that time so the wings represent speed okay and he was a leper because Symbolically, he was walking, he was uh, had a leopard uh, uh, skin on his head, okay? He wore a leopard, let me show you. Alexander leopard skin on his head. Alexander leopard skin on his head. According to Lawrence University, the leopard skin was probably inspired by the lion skin of Heracles in the earlier portraits of Alexander. The helmet also has the horn and ear of a bull, an attribute of Poseidon. The bull's horn recalls the ram's horns of Zeus Ammon. So see, he had a leopard skin on his head. You see? Okay. Can't really tell, but it's there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is a, this is an image of it. Okay. You see, this is an image of it. I don't know if y'all can. Let me see. I don't know if y'all can see it, but that's an image of it, of him and wearing the leopard skin on his head. You see? So read that for me again. This is Daniel, chapter seven. Verse six. Now you gotta remember, in Josephus, it tells you that the Levites told Alexander that this is you, okay? 
This is you right here. What we read right now. Go ahead. Daniel chapter 7, verse 6. After this I beheld, and lo, another, like a leopard, which had upon upon the back of his wings of a fowl. So that represents the wings of a fowl represents speed. Okay? Going to how fast he was taking down the dark nation. Okay, go ahead. It says, which had upon the back of it four wings as a fowl. It says, the beast and had also four heads. Okay? The four heads was the general back then. Okay? Which Alexander, there were more generals, but these generals was the one to uh, to come out on top. Okay? Out of Alexander general. Now, 